Well, Donald Trump is now ahead of Hillary Clinton in a major national poll. The Republican U.S. presidential nominee led by one percentage point in the ABC News Washington Post tracking poll released Tuesday. The results were within the poll's margin of error, placing the two candidates in a statistical tie. But this is the first time Trump has taken the lead in that poll since May. Here to take a look at the accuracy of polls is Cliff Young, president of Ipsos Public Affairs USA. Thanks so much for being here. Let's talk about this ABC News Washington Post poll. It's got Trump ahead, as does an L.A. Times poll. But many of the other polls put Clinton in the lead. So what accounts for this swing? Well, that's a great point. There has been a narrowing in the polls. And if you look at across all the polls, over the last couple weeks, we've gone from maybe an average of an eight-point lead for Clinton to maybe a four, uh, four to five-point lead for Clinton. So there has been a narrowing. Obviously, there's a distribution around the polls. Uh, there's a margin of error. But the best thing is always, always to do is not to look at one poll, but take the average of all of them. Clinton's in the lead, but there's a narrowing. There's been a lot of examples of polls being wrong, like the Brexit vote, the Scottish referendum in Canada. We've had a couple of national uh, elections and some, some key provincial elections that pollers, pollsters just got wrong. Uh, now, even though many polls predict Clinton's victory, could we see a different result come Election Day? Well, definitely. That's always the case, Ben. That can happen. And in the cases that you cited, like Brexit, for instance, um, it's all a function of turnout. Indeed, when polls are wrong about 90% of the time, it's that the pollsters got who showed up on Election Day wrong, right? Mm. They got the turnout wrong. And so what we all are doing, all of us pollsters here in the U.S., is doing sensitivity analysis. Like, what happens in a high turnout election? What happens in a low turnout scenario? And what we know is the following. If we're at the historical average or above the historical average, Clinton does well. If we're below that, that's Republican and Trump territory. The issue is, the question, the point is, we don't really know whether it's going to be a high or low turnout election. And Cliff, I'm scratching my head a lot because we report on this show a lot that there is a lot of apathy, a lot, not a lot of energy behind the supporters of Hillary Clinton. Not a lot of people are excited about voting for Trump, and yet we're hearing about this high turnout in early voting. What, how, is there a disconnect there for me? Explain, explain that to me. Yeah, we, you know, that's a great, great question. And to be quite frank, we don't know how early voting really behaves. This is only the third electoral cycle that we've had it. So we don't know if it's an early indicator or just that more people are early voting. We expect about 40% of the population early voting. We only had 33% in, in 2012. So we're not quite sure if it's a leading indicator or a fact that this is a new modus operandi for a voter. They just vote early. Um, I wanted to, uh, to bring up a tweet that I saw, I believe, yesterday. And this was from former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich. If we can pull this up, that'd be great. It says, Washington Post ABC poll is an absurdity. Trump has not moved up 13 points in the last eight days. He was never 12 points behind. Ignore polls. So it, it, what, what is your sense of the public's trust of polls leading into, uh, into the election? Well, that, that's, yeah, that's an interesting point. Shoot the messenger if you don't like the, like the message, right? Yeah, but this is, we're in a challenging time, right? We're in a time where polls are under, uh, under, are under threat or challenge uh, because we have a changing voter calculus, both in Europe and the United States. Um, people are, believe the system is rigged. They don't believe in politicians, and they don't really know how they're going to vote. Now, the issue is polls on average across all elections have been historically pretty accurate. We have a couple doozers here and there. Uh, we get things wrong once... Uh, Tip once in a while. Uh, but on average, we do a pretty good job. And I think the average of all the polls is a pretty good indicator of where we are, which is Clinton has the lead. Well, look, the FBI looking into Clinton's emails. This is at the top of the headlines across uh, North America. Uh, but we've also heard that, that this is not necessarily altering what people think already about Hillary Clinton. Could it still be to blame for the tightening of the polls? No, 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 no. It, 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 that's a great question. Uh, the FBI incident did not have an effect. Uh, we look at the empirical evidence, it doesn't. We already had a narrowing before uh, Friday. So Trump has been very effective in the last week or so in energizing his base, both Republican and, and independents, uh, through uh, a, a system is rigged message and going after Obamacare. That's why we've seen a narrowing in the pro polls, not because of this new round of FBI emails. Cliff, my last question is about swing states because one percent nationally doesn't necessarily translate into you know a close uh, election given the electoral college are we seeing the same tightening of polls in those swing states 
Yes, well, indeed, the United States is very different from the rest of the world, right? We have the, this arcane electoral college, and states are very, very important. Yes, we are seeing tightening. And what I would say is the following. You know, for all of your, your viewers today, when you're on Election Day, look for three states, North Carolina, Florida, and Ohio, because Trump, to have any chance of winning, has to win all three. And I would concentrate specifically on North Carolina, which has been trending Democrat, which is typically a Republican state, because we could know really early on uh, which way the election breaks if Trump does not win or does win North Carolina. Cliff Young in Washington, thank you very much. And we're going to find out which candidate really comes out on top when Americans head to the polls next Tuesday.